Hi, I'm Kristen Gutierrez, and I am an expert in leadership strategy and transformation with a focus on initiative and impact. I am the author of Be a Better Sales Leader, and I am super excited to be joined by my guest today, Stefan Huey. Hello, Stefan. Hi, Kristen. What a pleasure it is to be here. Yeah, always so good to talk to you, my friend. So for everybody who doesn't know you, tell us who you are. All right, so I'm Stefan Yui or Stefan Huyge in Dutch. If you go by my original Belgian name, I have over 20 years of experience in various client-facing roles in the localization industry. And uh, my div diverse background and fluency in four languages have helped me promote international business and provide customers with valuable insights into optimizing their international sales and marketing strategies. In the last couple of years, I have focused more on sharing my expertise and becoming a thought leader. I love it and it shows. For all of us who know you, knows you, it shows. So Thank tell you. us, <laughs> yes, um, today's topic is all about leadership. Tell us about your leadership experience. So as young kids uh, in our in our role playing, uh, uh, leaders are always dictators. Remember that? I remember at the start of my career, I was very surprised at the responsibilities that came along with telling people what to do. That was a rude awakening. I discovered that when I led by example, my management role became a lot easier. And I remember that after reading Stephen Covey's The Seven Habits, of highly effective people, my vision of leadership changed to a principle-centered approach that emphasizes personal growth and self-mastery as the foundation for effective leadership. I believe that leaders who want to be effective must first develop their own character and habits and then inspire and influence others to do the same. Throughout that book, Covey emphasizes the importance of leading by example of embodying the, the habits you want to instill on, on others. And he argues that true leadership is not about exerting control or authority over others, but about inspiring and empowering others to become their best selves. This is so good. Stop the press. I'm going to delay the book launch. Making <laughs> sure this content's in the book. Thank you for sharing that. And I... I love when my guests kind of reference real life examples and books and things like that. So thank you for doing that. And I love it. So, so you've kind of already answered my next question, but let me ask it anyway, which is how did you learn? What other principles did you learn from going from a dictator type leader to a principle based? <laughs> so I actually think that I discovered that there's no single best way to learn how to be a great leader. It's an ongoing process that includes many strategies. I've always been interested in, in leadership theory, and, and I primarily read nonfiction when I watch TV. It's usually something business-related as well. I have always observed other leaders and tried to learn from them. What to do as much as what not to do, so to speak. I've always taken note of their uh, leadership styles, communication skills, how they behave in, in the decision-making process, mm -hmm. and other characteristics that makes people effective or not. Ultimately, I believe the best way to learn how to be a great leader is to be open to learning and growth and to actively seek out opportunities to develop uh, your skills and knowledge. I try to practice regular self-reflection and I contemplate my successes and failures on a daily basis as much as uh, my personal values and belief systems. Over the years, I have become much more self-aware and I would like to think that today I make much more in intentional leadership decisions than in the past. That's great. And it ties into the third pillar of my book, which is all about professional growth and development, mm -hmm. why that's so important. And it touches on a little bit on the first pillar of my book, which is more about like getting out of your own way, failing forward, right? Because a lot of us don't know how to lead before we start leading. And even if we're taking over from a leader that was in our position before us, they don't hand you a magical blueprint to say, here, here's how you do your job, right? Exactly. Um, so I really resonate with everything that you're saying. Um, to wrap it up, uh, advice you would give your younger leader self, what's that? 
Be less afraid. Start sharing your expertise. The less afraid you are to die, the less afraid you are to live. You know, you're going to lose some battles in your career, and um, but you have to continue and, and look forward. I think it was Marcus Aurelius that says, do not act as if you were going to live a thousand years. Death hangs over you. While you live, uh, while it is in your power, be good. I love it. Yes. All right. Good. If we want to find you on on the web, where do we find you? LinkedIn's the best place, probably. LinkedIn is probably the best the the, the best place. Uh, my my last name is H U Y G H E. My first name is S T E F A N. There's no two people in the world that have this complicated name, so it's very easy to fish me out on LinkedIn for that uh, for that reason. I'll alone. just put a so. direct link to your LinkedIn in the show notes, right? Perfect. Yeah. But I I resonate. Even Kristen. Sounds simple enough. It's not. And so I can't imagine with your two names being. <laughs> You've got it. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Pleasure. Thank you, Kristen. Thanks for having me.